Hello and welcome to the Mad Mad Mel podcast. My name is Mel and I am a yarn dyer living on the Orkney Islands off the north coast of Scotland. And if you are a new viewer then hi and if you are a returning viewer then you're very much welcome back. Okay so since we last spoke or listened, chatted, I have cast on a few objects and I have four objects to show today. One finished and three works in progress. Three of my items are actually new cast on since my last recording. So before I get into that just quickly I want to do a little bit of admin announcement stuff. Um, basically the big news is I've decided to at the end of March 20, we're in 2023. At the end of March, I've decided to close down the yarn dyeing side of the business. It's it's been a funny couple of years, really. Well, let's be honest, it's been a couple few funny few years, and it has become to the point where, for the amount of time that goes into it, it just isn't working out financially viable to carry on. So. All that being said that although I've really enjoyed doing what I do that it I'm just going to kind of do it for my own personal use now and wind everything down. So at the end well I basically I'm going to have anything that I have left in stock in the shop uh, on the Etsy store will now be discounted till the end of March or maybe the 5th of April. I'm not sure yet because the financial year in the UK runs from the 6th of April to the 5th of April but Till the end of March-ish, um, everything will be discounted in the shop. I'm waving my arms around too much today. Everything will be discounted in the shop until then. But other than that, let's get on with the knitting content. So, first object, this is my finished object, and it is a new cast on since we, since I last recorded. And it is a full blown colorwork sweater. This is the, now forgive my pronunciation, it is the uh, Skogafjall sweater which is probably completely wrong and it is designed by Diana Waller and it is a full round yoked colour work sweater in an iron weight and I will stand up in just a moment to, to show it off. Um, I've had the yarn and the pattern for this for several years. In fact I bought quite a lot of yarn um, a few years ago with specific patterns in mind. I picked out a lot that I really liked. I think it was when I was first getting into Ravelry and discovered all these wonderful patterns and other knitting podcasts and such like and I found all these lovely patterns that I liked and I ordered a whole load of yarn for the ones I wanted and bought the patterns and what have you and everything's just been kind of sitting in my queue. So I decided now was the time to get through some of those garments that take up a, the yarn takes up a lot of space so this is an iron weight yarn so it takes up a lot of room in my stash the yarn for it so Skogafjall sweater it is a iron weight and I think I knit this slightly off gauge but I will stand up and show it to begin with and then we can talk more about it and what changes that I did make so like I said round yoked sweater and it is a full sleeve full length if I can just adjust my camera and it is a full length sweater in fact it comes down past my butt and for wearing with like jeans and sweatpants it has come out a little longer than I'd originally planned and that is because during the blocking process it is kind of lengthened as you can see with the sleeves I had knit them to this sort of length and they now come to this sort of length so I may re-block this and uh, just kind of ease it kind of widthways everywhere um, so although it's oversized I hadn't really meant for it to be quite as long as this and it is done with three colours as you can see and it has these trees 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 design in the three colours so I will sit down now and talk a little more about it so the gauge for this sweater is supposed to be 18 stitches 24 rounds to 4 inch square 
but the yarn I'm using, although it's an iron weight, is quite heavy iron weight. I am using Drops Alaska and Drops Nepal, I have used for this. And I found the Drops iron weight and DK weight tend to be on the heavier side. So the DK weight I would say is more like a worsted weight and a, the iron weight is quite heavy for an iron weight. I've made the mistake of knitting it at an iron gauge before for my husband's umka sweater and found it a, quite dense knitting on uh, the gauge that it would support, it is supposed uh, an iron weight should be knit at. So I have used a six millimeter needle for this where the pattern called for do, 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 a far, uh, five mil, I've used a six mil and my gauge is at 14 stitches and 21 rows which is fine, I just accounted for that with the size I chose to knit with. The yarns, like I said, should be in one of these project bags but I have so many project bags that look the same. I caught the right one. So I used Drops Alaska in the burgundy colour which is colour 53. I also used, I have more than one project in this project bag. Um, the beige at the top is Drops Nepal because I preferred the, well it's not a beige, it's supposed to be a light grey but it's certainly on the warmer side. This one is in colourway 500 and if I have, yep I do have the green, I only have a part of all of this. The green is Drops in Alaska in colour number 45 but I thought the light grey of the Nepal looked nicer with these colours than the Drops Alaska's uh, light grey which is a cooler grey. It, it did look fine but it made more of a high contrast and I preferred the, although obviously it's high contrast, but I preferred the way the khaki green worked with the, well it's more like a spinachy green, the spinachy green with the light grey of the Nepal. The Alaska is 100% wool and the Nepal is 65% wool, 35% alpaca. I do really like this yarn with the alpaca content. It gives it a little bit of softness. So those are the yarns I used. This pattern is a bottom-up pattern and if you've been here a while you will know that I mm, much prefer a top-down pattern, especially with a round York sweater. It There are advantages to a bottom-up sweater and there are disadvantages and, and so on. And one of the things that I found with this, I converted this to a top down. I basically did the instructions in reverse, which I have done before for a yoked garment. The only issue I found, and I'm not sure if it's going to show up very well on camera, is these bits of puckering here. And this is not down to the colour work tension. And my tension, I tend to be quite a loose colour work knitter. So don't look at my floats because they are not incredibly neat. I mean they're okay but you know they're not nice but on the pattern these are central double decreases because obviously you're working upwards. So I've done double increases kind of like one increase then a stitch then one increase then a stitch and it's created this puckering effect so I'm not 100% happy. It doesn't look too bad um, but if I was to do this again I would space out those increases because you're increasing I would space those out a little further apart. So I did it top down, reversed all the instructions, I added extra short rows at the back below the collar which I tend to do with almost all of my garments now if not all of them and yeah I just knit the sleeves down like you would with a top down sweater. I added a little bit of waist shaping at the sides. I just did a set of decreases and another set of decreases and then once we got to getting to hip level then this, the same two sets of d increases going outwards too. I've done shorter cuffs, I think they are a more like a two to three inch rib on the cuffs but I've done more like an inch and a half. 
and the bottom is just a standard two by two you know three inches of two by two rib as well i've kept it really simple i think that yeah the, the collar is just a one by one rib kept things really really simple i really really like it uh i suspect i will either reblock it or be mindful the next time it is washed because i do wash my garments in the washing machine on a wool cycle except for hand spun hand spun doesn't do so well in the machine and um, i will just have to be careful when it comes to the drying process that i lay it flat because i have a really bad habit when i block my garments other than something like a shawl is i i put them on the radiator I don't lay them flat, I don't put them out on a towel or any of that. I will wash them in the washing machine and let them spin in the machine. Un unless I've hand washed something and then I will get out my um, freestanding spinner that I use for yarn dyeing. I'll pull that out and put, it in, put on a fast spin and then put them on the radiator because I am impatient and I don't want to wait a week for something to dry in my house. So. In doing so, the weight of this garment, I think, has definitely helped it to kind of drip. And I will have to be a little aware of that with um, another garment that I wish to knit fairly soon in the same yarn base. Well, it's just, it's the Nepal, but it, it's still going to be that little bit of stretch with the alpaca in it as well. So that is my finished object for this episode. And now we have three works in process to work through. So the main one and the one that you've actually seen on the episode before if you've seen previous episodes is my bubble cardigan by Stephen West and I am getting quite close to being finished with this. It is huge. It is big 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 big. All of the body section is done and I have a part sleeve on that side and probably about a half sleeve on the other because I'm kind of knitting these not concurrently but um, I'm knitting well I have a, an 11 stripe repeat but it's not really a repeat because the colors are all different but I'm going from gold through a fade and back to gold and then through a fade and back to gold and that is a 11 bubble stripe pattern repeat not pattern repeat but repeat so I've done from the gold and through to the next gold and here we've gone through the gold to the next gold and I've actually done a second fade and just got back to the gold so I will likely to move on to do the same on that side and then move on to the third fade I think I will get three fades on each on the sleeves and then do the long cuff the pattern, if I've got it to hand here, is the Bubble Cardigan by Stephen West. And I only have a small picture in colour on this one. Um, but it is an oversized cardigan, drop sleeves, quite baggy sleeves actually, with long puffs and a wide shawl is that called it? shawl collar a wide short collar shawl collar even in a rib and a deep rib at the bottom of the cardigan i haven't done the garment as oversized well no that's not strictly true i haven't done the garment to my gauge is pretty on is spot on i think my gauge spot on 22 stitch gauge and the pattern is supposed to be 22 stitch gauge 44 rows so i'm on gauge but i've gone down two sizes when i looked at the stitch count for the body and calculated out at a 22 stitch gauge it made no sense in relation to what the pattern said the bust size would come out it would be huge like massively oversized and that's without taking into account positive ease and people on Ravelry a few people had commented in the project pages that go down pattern sizes because they came out massively oversized so that is what I've done I have went down two sizes I believe I'm doing actually the size small there is only one size smaller than this and it is it's still got plenty of positive ease but it's not massively baggy it's just kind of comfortably baggy if that makes sense 
and I think with the sleeves, did I go down even smaller with the sleeves? Let's see. Um, yeah, I'm actually go. I have gone down another size on the sleeves, and people had said this as well. The sleeves kind of don't really then way 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 oversized in relation. So I have gone down to the smaller size for the sleeves, picking up the stitches around the armhole, and that is working out well as well. I'm down to about here on the the longer sleeve, so I'm not that far off, but it's such slow going. <laughs> which is why I knit this sweater. I got around two thirds of the way through the body on this and it's such slow going that I needed a bit of a palette cleanser. And this was great because it's such chunky yarn and it just flew off the needles. It, I knit this so, so fast. Um, I'm not sure how fast without looking on my Ravelry page, but it was quick. And then I, I just got back into it. I mean, it's not an, it's not terrible to knit, it's really, really easy to knit and um, it's not complicated, or it's not horrible to knit, if you know what I mean. It's just that the raw gauge is so long. I mean, a fingering weight garment, especially oversized, is going to take a fair while to knit. But because of the bubble stitch, it compresses the stitches into, obviously, bubbles. If I show this up close, it is textured. So it's kind of puffy, like little poofs and it compresses the stitches so it makes your raw gauge much like tighter than you would be with even a regular fingering weight pattern so it is slow going and i was just getting tired of knitting the same thing <laughs> night after night the yarns that i've used i've used a mixture of a uh advent mini skins, mini skins from an advent calendar from a few years ago by Pixie Yarns and some mini skins that I dyed up myself and we're getting very very low on yarn now because I didn't, I'm trying to avoid having to dye any more yarn, I'm using what I've got. So of the Pixie Yarns advent I have like little little scrappy balls left and you know, a little bit, this is enough orange to do this the other stripe on the opposite sleeve. I knit the other half of this last night and this is what I have left for the next sleeve and I found I, I had like just enough. You know, it, it is really cutting it close and I'm starting to mix colours, scrap leftover bits together. So maybe it's like one stripe, one, one row in one colour and then another row in another colour and then back to the other one, just mix them up just to use up because I don't want lots of little odds and ends left over. So yes, the main kind of goal that runs throughout, so every 11th row is the same colour, it's the same gold, it's this one, is some of my own hand dyed yarn uh, in the, I don't remember which colourway, but it is a gold. How can you not remember your own colour? So you end up with so many colours, but it is a hand dyed yarn and this is on a merino cashmere nylon base that I trialled, um, I, I ordered a kilo and I wasn't 100% happy with it so I basically um, kept most of it for myself. Um, it's quite high twist so it's not soft like a cashmere would normally be. So I'm using that throughout and I will use that gold for the, all of the rib, so all the cuffs, all of the, the bottom waistband and the shawl button band collar will all be done in that gold so it'll kind of pull it all together um but otherwise yeah I'm really liking it it feels squishy and soft but it's not heavy you know there's a fair amount of yarn in here but because it's fingering weight it's it's lightweight and it's it's not too warm I have a big oversized iron weight cardigan in this yarn base and it's great for throwing on over two other sweaters when it's really really cold but this is kind of just throw over a you know a top or something like that so I'll be really happy when this is finished and I can snuggle up in it around the house because it's quite it's quite cool at the moment and it'll be even cooler once uh, where we live in Orkney we don't really get much hot weather I mean, a handful of days every year and warm weather is great but the house is an, an old stone cottage and we have two foot thick walls stone so 
um, even in the summer it tends to be quite cool in the house and you're less likely to have the heating on in the summer. So even in the summer you need cardigans and such like. So that is my first work in progress and that just leaves two more works in progress that you haven't seen yet and I haven't really got that far with but I will show them anyway. So first up we have the bottom band, bottom up sweater, I know it's unusual for me, but I do have the waistband knit of a new cardigan. It's not a lot, it is just, literally just the waistband in this really nice yarn. And it is like a black with a blue running through it. It's really, really bonny. And this is just two by two rib, so it's not very interesting to look at. The yarn, uh, do I have the label for this? It is, it's inside the cake. I have one cake, the rest is upstairs waiting to be caked up. But the yarn is, let me see, it is, which company is this one, this by? It's Nightshades by Harrisville Designs. And it is in the colourway Last Call, which I believe Andrea Murray did the, it wasn't the Oxbow cardigan, but it was one of her cardigan, the Ginny cardigan in this yarn. And I saw the picture for that and I loved the yarn, but I didn't love the cardigan. It's not, I mean, the cardigan's fine. It's just not a style of cardigan that I would wear very often. It's actually quite similar to the bubble cardigan with that shawl collar. It has like a belt and it's much more fitted and it's not, it's, it would look great with jeans, but I don't wear cardigans with my jeans particularly. I'm more likely to wear a sweater. So, but I really like the yarn. I love the colour of it. I love the fact that it was kind of a tealy blue, but it wasn't because it was black, if that makes sense. The yarn is American Colmore and wool. I mean American Colmore is wool, but I don't know what the other wool is. And 100% wool, obviously, and it is a DK weight. It is, it comes with quite a, it's actually quite heavy, even for a DK weight, in my opinion. Although I guess because it's wool and spun, it, that's probably why. So this yarn, when it is in a hank, well, all the time, it has a lot of vegetable matter in it. And I methodically went through it before I caked it up. I took out everything I could find, basically. It took me a little while, but definitely worth it for when you come to knit. And then I caked it up. I have still to do the other ones. There is four other hanks of this yarn. Not sure how much I will need for this sweater, but I do have 500 grams of it. Or do these come in 100 grams? Because it is an American yarn. Yes, they are 100 gram skeins. I believe there's only one company in the UK that you can get this from. I don't remember the name. Apologies. I think it might be based in either Jersey or Guernsey, actually, rather than on the UK mainland. Or is it, is it the Isle of Man? I think it's in one of the other islands that are kind of like independent of the UK but part of the UK sort of thing. But it's the only place you can get it and they're the only ones that import it. So that's the yarn I'm using and the pattern is by Ellie of Scandia because I love her patterns as you know and it is the Librarian cardigan which because of the yarn she's used which is black does not show up very well on pictures or almost black but it is a kind of a fitted cardigan with crisscross twisted stitch pattern in it and either regular sleeves or a little puff sleeve at the top. I will probably do regular sleeves but I don't know I might change it up and do a puff sleeve. Depends how I feel. So I am going to do this less fitted because I want to be able to wear it not just with dresses and skirts, I want to be able to wear it with other things if I so choose. It will likely be cropped, possibly, not sure, or hip length, but it will not be as fitted as this is. The pattern suggests zero to two inch positive ease, and I don't really do negative ease if I can avoid it, so it will have at least two inches of positive ease, maybe a little more, and the gauge, it, I'm spot on gauge for this, is a 16 stitch gauge, 28 rounds. And 
although I'm on gauge, my fabric is working up a little, I've lost my, I've lost my knitting, is working up a little bit loose, but I don't mind. Um, that's perfectly fine. I would rather have a lightweight, loose gauge garment than a dense one. And it is woolen spun, so when this has been kind of soaked, it'll bloom up a little bit as well. So that's as far as I've got, and mostly because this yarn, although it looks absolutely gorgeous knit up, is an absolute pain in the butt to knit with because it is black. I mean, technically it's not because it's got a bit of blue in, but when it comes to the actual knitting of it, it may as well be black. I don't know if I've got this the right way around. It may as well be black <clears throat> because it is so dark. So I can only knit on this in the daytime next to the window and it's not like knitting stockinette. I could probably do that by lamplight on an evening because you're not really looking at your work. But because of the crisscross stitches, the kind of twisted stitches, you need to be able to see what you're doing. So I'm not sure how long this is going to take to knit, but I imagine it's going to be a fair while. So yeah, that is the librarian cardigan. And I have one more new cast on and work in progress, consequently, for this episode. Zipper coming up. And I haven't done much on this either. I only cast this on a few days ago and I'm working with a yarn I will never buy again. It is a boucle yarn and it is, it, it, there's John outside the craft room, it is horrible yarn to work with. I mean it looks nice enough when it's knit up but it is horrible to actually knit with. It is full of tiny little loops and your needle gets stuck in all the excess bits of fluff and it's a pain in the bum. And you can't see your stitches. I mean, don't ask me to like do, it's a good job this is a relatively easy design and nothing fancy because you can't see your stitches. I mean, you can just about make out which is the knit side and which is the pearl side, but you've really got to look for it. And I have no idea what my raw gauge is because can't count, can't count the stitches. So the pattern I've slightly adapted, but not too much. I've just took out the textured stitches. The pattern is the Ori sweater by Audrey Borrego, also known as Yarn Flakes. And it is a top down drop sleeve v-neck sweater. And it should have seed stitch down, panel down the sleeves, which would be a complete waste of time and the seed stitch on the waist and it has it actually has seed stitch on the shoulders i'm not sure if i have a picture of that here no but the seed stitch starts oh we're a bit out of focus the seed stitch starts right at the top as a triangle and comes down kind of a triangle from the back the back of the collar and it comes down and filters into the seed stitch panels on the sleeve. It's very nice and I will knit this again with a yarn where you can actually see the texture but because you're not going to be able to see that texture and I won't be able to see my stitches with the boucle yarn I am just knitting those sections as stockinette. My gauge for this I think what did I end up doing? I'm knitting with the four millimeter needle as the pattern states although this Boucle yarn, which is Drops Alpaca Boucle Mix in the colourway, which colour? 2020. Well, that just sums up why this is such a awful yarn to knit with. <laughs> the yarn, I think, is recommended needle of um, five millimetre with a gauge of 17 stitches and 22 rows. I'm using a four millimeter needle, as the pattern stated, and a gauge of 17 stitches, whereas the pattern is a 19 stitch gauge. So I'm actually on gauge for the boucle yarn on a four mil needle. Um, not sure what my raw gauge is, because like I said, I can't actually see my stitches vertically. So, I did try with a 5mm needle 
but since I came out as a 17 stitch gauge with a four that's fine I'm quite a loose knitter and when I did try on a bigger needle I didn't like the fabric particularly it was quite open it was easier to knit with but it was quite an open fabric so yeah that's what I'm knitting and I haven't gotten very far haven't gotten very far haven't got very far haven't got very far all I have done so far is knit and I think that's twisted but knit the top of the shoulders and I've got down to the back there and I will it will just be knit down now to the underarm and then I believe you pick up the stitches at the top here and then knit down the front of the v-neck I suspect that's going to be a bit awkward to do with this yarn but I will plod along with it and again I haven't gotten very far with it because the last few nights I have been focusing on those bubble stitch sleeves I just want it off the needles now I can't believe I got to the point where I'm actually looking forward to knitting the rib and I really don't like knitting rib it it, it gives me bad shoulder pain and I'm actually looking forward to it because I am so sick of working on the bubble and the ends the ends to weave in oh my goodness let me just show you the inside of this garment quickly it is just ends ends everywhere i mean ends just ends just everywhere i oh I forgot to mention I decided to sneak this garment to save me some weaving in of ends so all down the middle there although there are ends I won't need to weave those in because I'll be sewing and tacking down but all the other ends so that's all the v-neck section it looks like like a tassel afghan uh, blanket here and the sleeves the sleeves are really bad because I'm using so many little bits and scraps now that was just ends everywhere it's going to take me a week to weave in all those ends so that is all of the knitted objects I think I have a I, I'm desperate to cast on lots of things now I have one two I'm recording a second video today so I have other things still inside me I have one two three garments that I would like to cast on soon really really soon like in the next week but only because I've, I've kind of got cast on itis now and i'm itching to do different things i have another sweater cardigan in this weight of yarn i really want to cast on and a couple of finger well one's fingering weight and one's a fingering weight held double with more hair that one less so itchy to cast on but the fingering weight one really kind of um looking forward to doing something new and working on something new even though i have two new cast-ons but boucle yarn not enjoying and nightshades i can only do at certain times so yeah so i think i'm going to leave that here for now and um i have some seeds to plant later this afternoon i have chilies and tomatoes and peppers and cucumbers and tomatillos what else? I mean, that's all. I have a lot of different tomatoes to grow this year, and I've left it really, really lit. So hopefully, we will get a reasonable crop. So I shall see you on the next episode, and uh, thank you for watching. Bye bye. Mm -hmm.